It was about 20 years ago when I had the privilege to know the most important person that ever existed on planet Earth. It was then when I was introduced to Jesus. And from the moment I had this privilege, everything I was being told to me sounded like Jesus. When I became a Christian, I decided that I would leave everything behind, not knowing that not everything I wanted to leave behind would follow me for 20 years trying to get me back. And today, as I look back, I realize that the fight against everything that I used to stand for still continues. And unless Jesus is first and last in my life, there is no way that I can survive the temptations and everything that comes with them. Today, we are going to talk about what Jesus means for me. And if I were to summarize what Jesus meant for me, I would just say that Jesus is all and everything to me. There is a Bible text that I always wondered what it meant. Since I was a small child in the faith, I wondered what it meant to buy gold tried in the fire, what it meant to buy white raiment, and what it meant to anoint my eyes to see better. When I accepted Jesus, I was only 18 years old. In reality, I had no problems at all. I could see well, I could dress well, and I thought that I was all sufficient in my, on my own. I grew up in a time when you were supposed to survive on your own. You did not depend on anybody because everybody could turn against you at any moment. And growing up as a self-sufficient person is not easy when you meet Jesus. Because differently from what everybody else teaches, differently from what every company wants, Jesus actually wants our nothingness so that he can fill us with his everything. So today we are going to talk about this verse. Of course, we don't have time to speak about, uh, about everything that it involves, but I'm going to mention that Jesus is my gold tried in the fire. Gold tried in the fire is an expression that when you really understand, you don't get to like it very much. First of all, gold tried in the fire, according to one book that I like very much, is faith that works by love. So in reality, the Bible verse that, that we just read in Revelation invites us to buy faith, faith that works by love. The first question that we probably have to ask ourselves, do we have any faith before we purchase some? Well, according to the Bible in Romans 12, 3, God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So when, he, when God created us, he has placed in us a measure of faith by which we can exercise more faith. You know, I heard many times the prayer, God, give us more faith. But I grew up to realize in the faith that you actually don't need more faith than what God has already given you to begin believing. You don't need more faith than what you already have. But the faith that we already have, as we exercise it, it grows and it develops more and more until it may take possession of our lives. And we get to live completely by faith. 
Like I said, I grew up in a time when you were supposed to stand on your own. You could not depend on anybody. And it was very hard for me to unlearn self-sufficiency and learn, uh, learn to depend on God. It was really hard, and I'm still struggling with it, at least as long as I'm still young. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible teaches us that we can grow in faith by exercising it. It says that the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So how do we buy this faith that we are invited to purchase in Revelation 3.18? First of all, we, we receive faith by the word of God according to the Bible. And also by being placed in circumstances where we can exercise it. So first of all, let's consider Romans 10.17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. So in summary, faith comes through the word of God. And we have many examples in the Bible when by believing in the word of Jesus, people received more than any human could give to them. And we have one example in Matthew chapter 8 about a centurion. He, he was not a Jew. He did not really have a faith that he, that he would profess. But when he came to Jesus in a moment of need, he was in circumstances that he could exercise the faith that he also had from creation since he was born, but he had never exercised this faith in God. So now he was in the situation to exercise it. And so he went to Jesus and said, Jesus, I need you. And Jesus said, wait a minute, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to give you what you are asking for. But this centurion had such a faith that he would not even feel like Jesus needed to come to his house. He said, just speak a word only and my servant shall be healed. Well, the servant of this man was, did not have just a regular sickness. It looked like the, the sickness this uh, servant had was a really, really dangerous one. So he wanted Jesus to intervene on his behalf. And when Jesus said that he wanted to go to his house so that he could lay his hand on the sick man, actually the man went even beyond what Jesus offered him and said, no, just say a word and my servant will be healed. How was the world created? You know, this is not the first time we see that through God's word, something that does not exist take place. In Psalm 33, 6, it says that by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. This is how everything took place. I mean, is it harder to say a word and create earth, create light, create everything? Is it harder to do this than just say a word and have a man healed? I don't think so. Probably, even though the centurion probably had not studied all that about the creation, but he had heard about the power of Jesus. He had heard that Jesus could save lives. So trusting in God's word, he said, Jesus, just say one word only and my servant will be healed. Today, the creative power of God can be manifested in our lives and can create in us what we do not have. The same creative power is being exercised in the work of redemption. And this is where we are at. This is what we are hoping for, is to be redeemed from everything we are experiencing here so we can experience heaven. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, the Bible teaches that God wants to give us something better than what we have and what we are. And he says, a new heart also will I give you. 
and the new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Isn't this what we are praying for? Isn't this what we've been praying for for 20 years? You know, I remember that as I became a Christian, together with Jesus in my heart, everything that could be considered good came into my heart as well. Because those good characteristics of Jesus had to replace the characteristics that had been building in my heart for so many years. I praise the Lord that I was only 18 when I accepted him. And in reality, when I think about it, I wish I could have accepted Jesus before that. Because my life before meeting Jesus had affected so many people, specifically my parents, they were worried about what my life would be like when I was going to grow up. I remember that the first time I felt the need for a change was when I was six years old. This is how much I knew that I was not a good person. Naturally, I was inclined to do bad things. And since I remember, my parents tried to change my life. And then they were hoping that when I went to school, the teachers would change my life. And then the teachers would hope that somebody else would intervene in my life to finally change me. You know, it was actually at the age of 18 when I was, I was already tired. I could not live with myself. And I remember that at night, I was meditating on my life, on my past and on my future, and I could not synchronize future happiness with past life, with my past life. I was wondering what would happen in my life, what it would be of me. And I was, as I was thinking of it, I've been, I, I, I was trying to find a way to change myself. And I couldn't, night after night, I would have the same experience, until one day when I remembered that 12 years before, my parents had received the Bible from my grandparents. So I went out of my bed and I looked for this Bible. It was about two o'clock in the morning. I looked for it in the dark and I found it somewhere behind other books. And I started reading it. I want to tell you that uh, I, I tried to continue living my, oh, my, my same life that I had been living until then but I couldn't live that life anymore. When, when I was going into circles where I used to go all the time, I would behave differently. And one day, I found myself sitting on a bench in a disco bar, looking at other young people dancing and behaving the way I used to behave. I was looking at them and I was asking myself, is this how I used to look like? The, the word of the Lord was changing my life without me even making an effort, without me realizing it. Well, I as I was invited to visit a church, a reform movement church, well, actually it was an evangelistic meeting, I went in with my usual clothes. But when I, when I went in and I heard the, Lord, the word of the Lord, I, I was so impressed that that first day that I stepped into the church, when they made an appeal for someone to pray, I prayed. I had read in the Bible about prayer and that desire to pray had been created in me without me making an effort. This is how much I believe in the word of the Lord. I believe it has creative power. I experienced it and I know that each and every one of us can experience it as, as well. Can the Lord create in us a new heart? Yes, he can. If he couldn't, he wouldn't have promised it. But he can do it. The question is, how much of a creative power needs to be exercised in our lives so we can get the fulfillment of that promise in our lives? If we believe that it takes the Lord one day or two days or three days to create that in us, we are rather evolutionists. We are not crea uh, creationists. 
If we believe that Jesus can do it now in an instant, then we believe in the power of creation. We believe in the power of God to create something from nothing. You know, the, the worst thing we can do is to believe that there is something that we can add to our perfection. You know, we don't have that much time to go into details, but I just want to mention, uh, uh, to insist a little more on the fact that God does not need time to fulfill his promises that do not depend on a, on a certain time in prophecy. The promises that deal with our salvation, God can fulfill in our lives today. And let me tell you this, from my experience I tell you, if every one of us would let the word of God, the Holy Spirit work in our hearts the way we do when we accept the truth, if we all accepted the same work in us as we did when we accepted the truth, God's people today would not be here. God's people today would be enjoying the atmosphere of heaven. The reason we are still here is because we believe that one day God would change us. But today, I invite you to believe that it is not one day that God will change us. It is today that God will change us. It is today that we could experience the same that we experienced when we first accepted Jesus. You know, grace, the grace of God is sufficient to change us, not only that. Just like the word of God was all powerful to create and it is all powerful to sustain the world, so it is with us. If God's power, if God's word was sufficient to create in us the desire to submit our lives to him, his word is all powerful to maintain us in love with him. But this is what we do not believe. We believe that we only need Jesus when we make the first steps, just like a child. They cry and they want to be taken on the mother's arms until the day they start work, walking. When they start walking, it is hard for the parents to catch up with them. When they see their parents, they don't go towards the parents, they go away from the parents because they know that the parents are used to take them on their arms. So, so it is with us in the faith. When we do not walk, we depend on the, the Lord. When we start walking, we believe we can do it on our own. And so we do not depend that much on God's word as we used to. We take one day or two days not reading, not studying the word of the Lord. And of course, if that word is not present continually in our lives, the creative power of God cannot be exercised because the creative power is being manifested through the word of the Lord. So the question is, if you wanted the promise from Ezekiel 36, 26 to be fulfilled in your life today, if you wanted that to happen, I ask you, how much of God's word did you read today? How much of God's word are you willing to accept to be exercised in your life today? Are you scared that the word of the Lord might transform you in such a way that you would not be able to experience what you really love to experience on this earth? Brethren, unless we come to the point of not wanting to live at least not even one day on this earth, then is when Jesus will take us home. But as long as we still like our old life and we are afraid that by studying the, the most important points in the scriptures, those might change our lives that drastically. God will not change us. So today we have the chance to experience what we did experience when we first accepted Jesus. But we have to behave like we did back then, behaving like little children, depending on every word that comes out of the mouth of God, because the very thing that he says can be created in our lives. Do you want gold tried in the fire? Do you want the faith that works by love? Well, this is our chance to buy it through studying 
the word of the Lord profoundly. Teach your children to study since they are small. Read the Bible with your children in the morning and in the evening before they go out and when they come in. Because what you cannot do with your own advices, God's word can create in your children in a moment, in an instant, just as he created the world. May the Lord help all of us to really believe that God can work out wonders through his word because it is all powerful. Thank you very much and may God bless his church today and forever. Amen.